the heavenly trio, boys can be angels too. As we drove home from the gathering on the Sunday after Thanksgiving, my mother had some news for me. Alex, you're going to be a celestial being. What do you mean, mom? The church is organizing a Christmas pageant with the usual manger scene, and they need heavenly beings. So, I volunteered you. To be an angel, aren't angels usually girls? The director said angels can be boys or girls. She also mentioned that your friend Max will be one. Well, if Max is doing it, I'm in too, I said. Good. There will be rehearsals on Sundays after church until Christmas. The latest circle is making the costumes, but they won't be ready for a couple of weeks. Tilda Tilda Tilda. Later, I went to Max's house to discuss this angel role. It'll be fun, he said. We get to dress up and appear divine, and we have lines. Lines. Do we have to memorize them? Yes, but they're from a Christmas carol, so you probably already know them. Do we have to sing? No, we just say them. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn king. Peace on earth and mercy mild, God and sinners reconciled. That's all. Yep. And then we just stand around and look divine. We'll be on a riser behind the manger, to make us closer to heaven. And we have to dress up. Yeah, I haven't seen the costume yet because they're still making them. I hope they don't make us look silly, I said. Of course, you'll look silly, Max said, because you are silly. You're sillier than me, I said. We playfully wrestled and ended up laughing. Tilda Tilda Tilda. At the rehearsal, Miss Smith, the pastor's assistant, introduced us to the rest of the cast and gave us our positions. There were three angels, me, Max, and Angie, a girl from school. Angie, meet Alex and Max, your fellow angels, Miss Smith said. Hello, Angie said, smiling at us. Nice to meet you both. You too, Max and I said. During the rehearsal, Angie explained more about the costumes and our roles as angels. We were excited and looking forward to the pageant. Tilda Tilda Tilda. On the day of the pageant, we wore our angel costumes to the church. After the performance, people praised us, and we mingled with the congregation. The adults complimented our beauty and performance. Later, Max and I discussed how we felt about the whole angel experience. You know, I really enjoyed being an angel, Max said. It felt different and special. Yeah, me too, I said. It was a unique experience, and I'm glad we did it together. Max hesitated for a moment. You know, Alex, I think I want to keep the costume. Maybe we can wear them again sometime. That's a unique idea, I said. I'm open to it. It's fun to be an angel, after all. I agree, Max said, smiling. Let's keep them and have some fun being celestial beings whenever we want. From that day on, Max and I occasionally wore our angel costumes and did fun activities together, like having an angel tea party or pretending to be celestial beings in a playful manner. It became our little secret, and it brought us even closer as friends. As for Angie, we eventually told her about our angel adventures, and she joined in on the fun. Our trio of celestial friends brought more joy and laughter to our lives, making our shared experiences even more magical. As we walked back to rejoin the crowd, Mark and I agreed that we would keep our angel costumes and not return them to Mrs. Head. It felt like a secret adventure, and I found myself looking forward to the idea of being angels again. It was strange, but there was a certain thrill in the taboo nature of it all. As the day went on, Mark and I continued to receive compliments from friends and family about our appearance as angels. It was both flattering and awkward, as we had to maintain the facade of being feminine while we interacted with everyone. I was torn between feeling happy that people thought we looked pretty and feeling uncomfortable with the deception. After the church service and the subsequent festivities, we went back to Mark's house to play some video games. Angela joined us, but the three of us didn't talk much about the pageant or our angel personas. We tried to pretend everything was normal, but there was an underlying tension. It was as if we were all aware that something had changed, and we weren't quite sure how to address it. As the days passed, Mark and I continued to wear our angel costumes in secret when we had the chance. 
We'd sometimes meet up at each other's houses, carefully ensuring our moms wouldn't find out. We'd experiment with our makeup and try different hairstyles, attempting to create the most angelic looks we could. It was during one of these secret angel playdates that Mark and I decided to invite Angela to join us. We realized that keeping it a secret from our closest friend was starting to put a strain on our relationship with her. So, we mustered the courage and invited her over to Mark's house. To our surprise, Angela was delighted by the idea of being angels together. She loved the angel tea party concept, the hair and makeup experimentation, and especially the idea of playing kissing games as angels. It was as if she had been waiting for this invitation, and her enthusiasm only added to the excitement. From that day on, the three of us became inseparable as angels. We created a secret club called, The Heavenly Trio, where we could freely indulge in our angelic fantasies. We had our angel tea parties with imaginary tea and cakes, and we would spend hours playing dress up, trying on different outfits, and perfecting our angelic appearances. Over time, our angelic adventures began to extend beyond the confines of Mark's house. We'd sneak into the woods behind his neighborhood, away from prying eyes, and make snow angels during winter. We even attempted to fly by jumping off swings at the park, though, unsurprisingly, it didn't quite work. Our friendship grew even stronger during these angelic escapades. We laughed, bonded, and discovered a new side to ourselves that we never knew existed. We felt free, liberated from the constraints of societal norms, and reveled in the joy of being angels. As the months passed, our secret angel club gradually faded away. Angela moved away to another town, and Mark and I eventually grew out of our angel phase. We continued to be friends, but our lives took us in different directions. Though the heavenly trio disbanded, I never forgot those days of being an angel. It remained a cherished memory of friendship, acceptance, and daring to be different. It taught me that it's okay to explore and embrace different aspects of yourself, even if they seem unconventional to others. Looking back on it now, I realize that being an angel wasn't about pretending to be something I wasn't. It was about breaking free from expectations, embracing the fluidity of identity, and finding beauty in being unique. And so, the memory of the heavenly trio lives on in my heart as a reminder to never be afraid to spread my wings and soar, even if it means dancing to a different tune and embracing my own version of angelic charm. The End